Casey Martin from Wine Country Pens and Wine Country Woodworks and this is going to be a video review of my 14 inch bandsaw from Grizzly. As you can see right here it's a G0555P model which is very similar to the G0555. The only difference is that this is their Polar Bear series. It was just a special edition but everything's the same other than some of the coloring. And it's also the same as their 14 inch deluxe bandsaw, which I think is just the anniversary version or something like that. But I'll get into all the reasons why I like it. I don't have too many reasons why I dislike it. And I'll tell you guys the pros and cons and all of those. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, of course, we just have the cast iron table here. What I love about this cast iron table is it does everything that it's in that it needs to do. It's you know simple but it has a miter slot if you want to use feather boards or of course just you know a, a miter gauge this fence which i will get into in a little bit is not the original fence it came comes with the whole setup is is the same but i did add this resaw attachment which is sold by grizzly and made for this and if you saw this little handle earlier that's something that i obviously added as a custom but getting back to the tabletop and its accessories, or not really accessories, the parts of it are the blade guides. I really, really love these blade guides, these blade guides because of how simple they are to maneuver. The thrust bearing is as simple as loosening this and then you just roll a wheel in the back to move it forward and back. These um, side guides, they use an Allen wrench as well as the bottom blade guides are the exact same setup in terms of adjusting them as the top ones. And they do a great job. I mean, I know you can get super fancy aftermarket guides from Carter and other places like that, but these do everything that I need them to do. I don't do a lot of scroll work, but if I did, I know that they would work really well because this blade I have on here right now is a three quarters of an inch blade. But when I used to have a smaller blade, <clears throat> it did fine for scroll work and things of that nature, which is where blade guides really shine. So moving on to some of the other aspects, I'll touch on some of the cons as well. It, let's talk about the fence for a little bit. The fence is great. Like I said, I have this resaw fence attachment. And the original fence, this is what it looks like, the top part. The whole system, other than just the literal fence part itself is exactly the same. This part just unscrews and this part screws on. So talking about the cons of this fence, which is if you buy this bandsaw or the updated version of it, which is the same, this is the fence you'll be getting. The downside of this fence is that what you can see is this is the max height your blade guides can be even if you're doing something that's quarter of an inch thick or half an inch thick, you can only bring your blade guides all the way down to where the fence is, right there. So that's kind of a big issue if you're cutting a lot of small things. And with this fence, what you can do is you can actually flip it and then the thin part up here will then be the fence part that the wood will right against and then you can get the blade guides down to about three quarters of an inch which is much better. So I'll talk a little bit about, more about the fence. I'll, I'll bring it up closer to this system or part of the system in a second. So I personally really like this, this fence system. The thing that I like the most about it is just how easy it is to use. The only bandsaw I had before this was a Craftsman small benchtop bandsaw, so I don't have too much experience with higher end bandsaw fences. However, I really like this one because it's just as simple as moving this up and sliding across. And on the back, whether it's this upgraded fence attachment or the previous one, on the back side, you just have a little knob to adjust how much clearance you want between the table and the bottom of the fence. And obviously I have it pretty much to as low as it'll go. I don't know why you would necessarily bring it higher, but maybe if you were using the other fence and wanted to have a higher um, a higher support, I guess, is why you would do that. But getting back to the fence, what I really like is this ruler system. I applied a different ruler system that came with this 
fence attachment because the ruler system gets changed when you have a different different width fence. But is I love this little magnifying glass for the ruler. You really dial in to a sixteenth of an inch exactly what you want. Probably even a thirty second, even though the lines aren't marked on here of course, you could even dial it in that much. And I really like it because it's super easy to lift off if you need to, and then it goes back on there and it just immediately um, adjusts to a perfect right angle. And uh, I really like it. So I'll move on to a couple other aspects and then that's about it. So I think really the main thing that I dislike about this bandsaw, and most bandsaws have dust collection like this, is the dust collection. The port it comes with normally which I still use is this four inch port in the back. And this works okay. I don't know why most bandsaw manufacturers have them down here and not on the back, but still up here. I, it's probably because there's some engineering uh, explanation for it that maybe the most dust gets pushed down here because of the force of the blade. However, what I did to kind of modify that is I have a Y fitting coming off of this hose a little bit down out of the shot, and then it comes up to this two and a half hose, and I have this right underneath the blade, and that has improved dust collection a ton. The only thing it doesn't work the best on is when I'm cutting alumilite resin, and that kind of has stringier, um, cutoffs because it's not really dust it's it's almost like string but with normal dust with normal wood which I think most people cut on a bandsaw it works fantastic I mean you normally can't just push dust to the side of the insert and watch it be sucked without this type of thing but when you do that you can with the saw off so with the saw on the dust collection is even better because it's pushing the dust down and, and has that force. So that's really the only downside of the saw that I noticed from the start, but it's super easy to do this. Um, I basically bought this hose that it's kind of like a rigid hose. It's all, it has the kind of makeup that those bendy straws have where if you manipulate it a certain way, it tends to hold itself. And then I also have this um, taped up at the top that you probably can't see, but it's so easy if I want to manipulate the blade guides after installing a new blade to just pop it right out, put it back up, and just put a new piece of tape on. And that only happens as often as you change a blade. So I'll touch on a couple more aspects and then that's pretty much it. So the last thing I kind of wanted to touch on was the blade tensioning system that it has and also the way that you lower and and raise the blade guides i think that i i've seen in other videos and just other band saws that the blade guide lowering system that this bandsaw has isn't the best it's totally fine but what i've seen a lot is this knob all it does is loosens or tightens the blade guides position and then you have to manually with your hands move them up and so it's a lot harder to get super precise measurements quickly, or not measurements, but positions of the blade guides. Others I've seen where you twist this knob and then it lowers or raises on its own. Now to the tensioning, I really like the tensioning. What's really cool about this red lever is it's a really quick way to just alleviate a lot of the tension. And most of the time, depending on your tension, you can lift up this lever and then you'll alleviate enough tension to install a new blade. So it's super fast and easy. That's how I have my tensioning set up. So when my blade gets dull and I need to replace it, I just lift up this lever and then replace it. This knob right here is for adjusting the track of the wheels. I think that's how you would call it, but basically it's position, whether it's slanted somewhat or not. And that's basically to get the tracking of the blade perfectly. And um, that's pretty much the main system it has for tensioning and the, the blade guides. What's also cool is you probably can't see in the shot, but right here 
on this piece of metal, it actually has little lines for the width of your blade so you know what the tensioning should be. It has a quarter inch, half an inch, and three quarters inch, which is the max width for this bandsaw, by the way. And so that's really easy. You just twist this knob until you're right on the line and then you're good to go. So I'll say a couple of closing things and then that's about it. So that's about it for my review on this Grizzly bandsaw. I love the bandsaw and I'm sure I missed some aspects of the review that some people would like to know about. So definitely leave a comment down below. That's the best way because once I answer that, other people who have a similar question can see it. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and like to see future videos of reviews about my tools and other things I put out. And for my current subscribers, let me know what you guys think about these reviews. I definitely have watched a lot of reviews in the past when I have made my purchases, so I thought it would be great to let people know because I should have mentioned it earlier, but I've had this bandsaw for a little over a year now, and so I've got to use it a lot and kind of see its ins and outs. So anyway, like I said, like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and take it easy everyone. Have a good one.